Factors delicious, ready to eat meals make eating better every day easy. Wherever tomorrow takes you, be ready with pre prepared, chef crafted, and dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. Head to factormeals.com slash goodchildren50 and use code goodchildren50 to get 50% off. That's code goodchildren50 at factormeals.com slash goodchildren50 to get. 50% off. Last night, something crazy happened to us, and it's imperative that we get it off of our chests immediately. And you think the first thing that we're going to say is the crazy part, but it only gets it's crazier. Crazier. We got invited to the screening of Drive Away Dolls. One way ticket to dehydration station. Yeah, so that's the energy that we were bringing into Drive Away Dolls. We saw the movie. It's full of twists. It's full of turns. I think it's the perfect movie to watch stoned out yes. of your mind. And if you are a lesbian, you're going to love it. But anyways, <laughs> we leave the movie theater. We're walking. We're about to go to Taco Bell. Lo and behold, we turn to the left. Who do we see? What do we see? Ellen. Ellen. <laughs> we <laughs> see Ellen and all of her star dust. <laughs> Everyone thinks we're seeing Ellen, Ellen DeGeneres, DeGeneres on the street. <laughs> yeah. No, we saw Ellen Stardust Diner. And if you're not familiar, Ellen Stardust Diner, if you're a Gleek, you know what it is. It's um, it's a diner in Midtown where a lot of aspiring Broadway singers and stars get their start. They perform there. It's nonstop. Broadway performances yes. in a diner. It, it is nonstop to a point where you're like hoping whoa. to get a word in and yeah. you're like they're singing. Like, whoa, it is nonstop. One day more Les Mis. Um, so I've never been. Obviously, Andrew has been I've to been a few Stardust times. Diner. I've been a few times. And ordinarily when you're walking past, the line is like around the block for Ellen's. And I think I was just in such a place where I was like, I need something to fucking make me laugh. And I actually think it was also like I knew I was being a drag the whole day. And I know like, what would bring Andrew more joy than Ellen's Stardust Diner. We, we decide to say... Say la vie. Yes. Let's go to Ellen's. And I said, table for two. And she said, right this way. And that, that was never gaggy. happened. That was gaggy. So it was fate. We sat down. We got nachos. We got martinis. We got f- food galore. We got food. We got food. And <laughs> you listen, it was kind of a theme throughout. Wasn't the best, but the ambiance was incredible. I, if you're someone like me who like, as a child would get anxiety at a magic show, you wouldn't believe the level of cortisol rushing through your body throughout every performance. There is a, and we were unfortunately placed directly on top of the stage, yes. which is just a, a six inch piece of barrier between two rows. I, of I would seating. say they were doing full floor routines. There was, there is an Andrew, there was an Andrew among the staff there was a man who was laying on the crowd in between, like, the diners pouring, pouring ketchup, ketchup on, on his, his head face to look like blood. And, and I really did away. appreciate And art. then he passed away. But what happened? A foot pop. Because if you're ever trying to make anyone gagged, all you need to do, do is lay down on the floor and pop that foot, point your toe. And then if you're not pointing your toe, it's not worth it. If you point your toe, it's completely worth yeah. it. Yeah. Anyways, I left that experience thinking to myself, when's it going to be my turn? And I often do that. I think that you, well, you revealed to me that you have a try, you've attempted to apply to Ellen's before. So I've attempted to apply to Ellen's Stardust Diner before. I do have serving experience, but I think that they wanted maybe a little bit more than my catering experience because when I was 17. You gotta, you gotta think about what these people are doing here. Like it, it is, they are putting on Broadway level performances on top of managing and serving yes. like at least seven to eight if not more than that tables each some of the most 4.5 rated food you've ever seen and <laughs> is that what it's rated that's pretty high i, I just was... gave it a 4.5 out of five at a 4.5 out of 10 oh it has to be one of the most difficult jobs to exist in the service industry can you imagine and um... I think it might put you in the grave, but I do think 
I you have to wonder if that's worth it. I meant for that because I meant for constant simulation. I'm going to be talking to the people. I'm going to be belting I'll a be show right back. To I'll be right back. One you want your day check? more. Another day, another destiny. They were Extra really. Extra catch up. And the, the fact that they need to sing at the top of their game and then continue to talk for the rest of the night. Those vocal cords, man. A lot of these these people on Broadway, they're on vocal rest, I'm sure. Anyways. Good children. One day more I did not live day, until today. Another ending road to Calvary. <laughs> um, hey, guys. Vocal- and welcome back to. What? Oh, yeah. No, no. Go ahead. No, I was going to talk about Spotify, but we'll do it after. Hey, guys, and welcome back to Good Children. The podcast where hosts Joe Hedges and Andrew Muscarella reflect on their 23 years of friendship. Growing up in the late 2000s. Early 2010s. And all of the trauma, all of the nostalgia. Trauma. And cereal brands that go along with it. You thought we were going to talk about something crazy this week. We're talking cereal. No, we're talking about cereal. We're talking about sugary sweets breakfasts. And we're talking... And we're seeing where it takes us. Because I think it could take us some crazy places. I think it's going to take us some places we've never seen before. But before we even get into that, before we even dive and delve, dip and, I just dip and dunk. Before I dip, dunk, and devour. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And slurp, sip, and suck that milk down. I need to say one thing. And I need to get it off my chest. Recently... Spotify has um, introduced the feature of knowing how many followers that you have for the podcast. We got to see how many followers that we have for on Spotify, and it was a great number. I definitely would say it was over 20,000, which was beautiful for us. And then I, as somebody who like loves math, as I do, I just saw the reviews. And I said, we have 3.2K five-star reviews, which is fantastic. Fantastic. I couldn't ask for more. You could. Well, you couldn't ask for more. I'm just thinking to myself, if we have over 20,000 loyal followers, can you imagine? Can you imagine 16,000 five-star reviews? We'd be hosting. We'd be hosting the Grammys next year. We would be we would be in rooms we've never seen before. Never seen sure. before. I do have to agree with you. I do think that if if just 16,000 how many if just 13,000 people gave us a five-star review, you would fundamentally change our lives forever. In in forever. ways <laughs> like, you couldn't even imagine. <laughs> like, the way we would be on podcasts that you, we would be talking to people that you've dreamed of us talking yeah. about. Kiki Palmer, done. Easy. In the seats. In the seats. On Trixie Mattel, in the seat. Whoever you want, 16,000. Tana Mojo. Tana Tana Mojo and Brooke canceled podcast featuring good children in the seats. Whatever you want could happen with 16,000 five star reviews. Here's the thing. Here's the thing about a Spotify yeah. review. It is so easy. It is so easy to review a podcast on Spotify. All you have to do is literally be on your phone, click on the fucking review button, like yep. the, on the stars. Press five and you're done. We're gonna give you four seconds right now, everyone. Four seconds. You're looking at your phone, right? You're gonna you're clicking on whatever you're on. You're opening back up Spotify. You click on Good Children. You're looking at the reviews. It says rate and review. You press that. Five stars. Done. So what are we talking about today? Today we're talking about cereal brands. We're talking about childhood eating these cereals. Talking about where we would want to eat the cereal. Everything cereal. And we're just going to make this really easy for ourselves. I have no idea what Andrew's saying, but we're just going to pull up a list of like the top 10 cereal brands in the US and just talk about them. This was honestly prompted. I was watching British kids eat American cereal for the first time and it really captivated me and it took me back to a place where I was eating these sugary sweet cereals all the time and didn't even flinch. Whenever you talk about like I don't like the fact that you're acting like eating cereal like cereal is a dirty dirty word like a sweet cereal is a bad thing. 
I wouldn't say it's a, it's a bad thing at all. But like you honestly are the you are. I hate to say it. No, like, then you should say the it. The way that you talk about then cereal say made it. me really question like the way that I ate cereal in my life. I'm like, I feel like that's not something like. Like we have listeners who just literally like their will their their reason for living is waking up and having a bowl of fruity pebbles and you're like I was eating that sugary sweet cereal without even thinking twice. Well, I was, and that's just the truth. And, and I still would do it now, thing. but I would still do it now. I never said I wouldn't do it now. Who's who, you're gonna? Talk, Maybe I'm projecting. Gonna, I, th- I think I think you might. Maybe be projecting. I'm projecting, and that's okay. Yeah, and I I'm sorry. Hold on, let me take a step back. Well, I'm sorry for well, projecting. And I appreciate your apology. And I'm sorry if I made you feel and the listeners at home feel like I was making you feel like you were in the wrong for eating a sugary sweet cereal. And just because I'm calling them sugary sweet is because I want to add a little something, a little flair to them. A little sugary sweet. You're kind of sugary sweet. Thank you. Okay, so I'm on salon.com. That seems like the wrong website. <laughs> the top 10 breakfast cereals ranked according to Reddit. Okay, number one, an overwhelming majority of cereal enthusiasts agree with this one. And it Let is... Let me guess. Frosted Flakes. Fruity Pebbles. I'm in disbelief. <laughs> because you think it should be like at least in the top three, right? I don't think Fruity Pebbles would rank in my top five. This is top 10. Yeah, but as number one, it's Fruity Pebbles. No, number 10 is Fruity Pebbles. Oh my God. Okay, okay, okay. I- it is truly like the most emotionally challenging journey weekly to edit these conversations and hear me say something wrong and then say, no, Andrew, you didn't hear that right. Like, you don't know, like, I have to get back into therapy. It's getting really bad, you guys. It might be seasonal depression. It's something. It's getting dark. Fruity Pebbles are, I think, that's the best. Joe, you you seriously, <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to be mean. I was going to say you seriously need to get that tongue fist fixed. Why it's, didn't you say, why can't you say one word fist, properly at the current moment? What's going on? You really need to get that tongue fixed. <laughs> Do you want me to enunciate a little bit more for you? No, it's okay. Um, You're gonna like you like that crack crackly shit. Yeah, how could you not? It's, it's like paper. No, it's texturally amazing. Flavor wise, it's kind of a ten out of ten. I love a fruity cereal, and it's sweet as hell. It's, and I don't say this often. Too sweet for me. T S F M, T S F M. Too sweet for me, and it doesn't have to be too sweet for you. That's okay. It just like feels weird. Like I really, and this is because I really do trust your opinion on food in such a serious way. Thank you. If we're if if we go to a restaurant and we're in, if we're at like a baker's counter and mm-hmm. there's cakes and pies in front of us, I am not looking at what's in front of me. I'm following Andrew's gaze, mm-hmm. and it is it is rapid. It's like it's you get, you almost enter REM. It's rapid eye movement, looking at the the pies and the mm-hmm. cakes in front of you, and you make a decision, and I say I have to get the same thing because I know. That you're not doing that based on anything but like past experience, lived experience, yes. knowledge, and vision. You and see something, you say something, you say, I want that. I, I love the way that you brought that up because I, it is that rapid eye movement. It's scary. It I, I scan. I scan all of the options. And then I go back to what I learned in science, right? It's like you had the hypothesis, you had it, you tested, and then you have your conclusion on each one of those items. And even if I had it once, I know exactly what it's going to taste like and exactly how I'm going to feel about it. That's what's going on in my head when I choose the apple tart, the sour cream apple pie from Martha's Country Bakery. Did I know. you have that this week? I did. Very good. I got it a la mode. Did you get a little Don- hot chocolate? I got a hot chocolate too. What kind? Just the dark chocolate because their, their dark chocolate is Dark. ATT. Almost too dark. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Back to Fruity Pebbles. Fruity Pebbles is not a cereal that I would be willing to eat in a bowl with milk, but I would be willing for a Fruity Pebble Rice Krispie Treat. Well, of course. And and here's a pivot. It's senior year of high school. Bangers is out. I'm royal. Has everyone seen, by the way? Joe got a tattoo that says royal. There's like no proper way of showing it so on camera. Yeah. It is a really cute tattoo. So we've committed to it for yeah. life. Yeah. Um, I, it's senior year. We're doing a production of Turn Back the Clock. The theater department at St. Anthony's is doing Turn Back the Clock. I saw it. You saw it. 
this is a I wish I could turn forward that clock. I, everyone wishes they could turn forward the clock because <laughs> there's something about that phrase that doesn't sound right. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> we, I was the assistant director, as we know, or as it was determined in my yearbook, assistant to the director. I was an assistant. <sighs> turn back the clock. We have this one girl. She's very cool. She was captain of the cheer team, but then she quit cheer. And she got into weed. This was my Alex Earl. Like, in school, I was like, she is the coolest fucking person in the entire world. Yep. And she also did theater. So we became friends. And anyway. And weed. Anyway. And you were impressionable. I was impressionable, Andrew. Oh, I'm sick about this. And then this. It's, it's the closing night of Turn Back the Clock. I'm wearing a sports jacket and jeans. Of course. Very fatherly of you. She walks in. She goes, I have something in this bag. I have something in this bag for you. A joint. Fruity Pebble Edible. <gasps> uh, a Rice Krispie Treat yeah. bar. Fruity Pebbles. Massive. Massive. You ate the whole thing. I literally remember feeling like I was holding a gun. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> this is... like I was like, it felt like I was about to do... Something that I would regret for the rest rest of my life. Because I can't imagine you putting that in your bag and then taking it into your mother's car. I know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and yeah. driving around thinking the entire, the entire time, time the cops I are going to pull us over. I have pot on me. I have pot on me. I'm 17. I'm going <laughs> to prison. <laughs> they search me. You're in jail. Fruity pebble edible. And obviously, as we know, I did not take that edible. I actually, I took a picture of it. I took a picture with it. And I put it right back in her bag and didn't say a word. I'm Wait, scared. you should kind of hit her up. How is she doing? She lives in Florida now. Well, I feel like that makes sense. Fruity Pebbles, keep them with the edibles, keep them with the rice krispie treats. No, but here, I'm sorry. Bowl. I'm sorry. You need to have a bowl of Fruity Pebbles with milk. You need to let those pebbles soak and sit for a second or two and then have a scoop. I think I have a textural thing too, because if it gets too soggy, No, you can't let it sog. It needs to be the perfect amount of milk with that cool milk with a fruity pebble. <sighs> Tell you one thing. What if, why the hell with cereal is it like a science experiment that you can't let it sit for too long, but when it sits for too long and then it's soggy, but if it doesn't sit enough, it's too crunchy. I can't. I I, I have so many other things to Do worry to about. Do you piss you off even more about what the number nine one is? Quaker life. Life. Life cereal is number nine out of ten. Uh -huh. And there are probably, I can only assume, dozens of cereals <laughs> out there. <laughs> I was going to say hundreds, but dozens. Yeah. Cinnamon life or just plain life? It, I, think I think it's cinnamon life. At least you give me something. Yeah, it's cinnamon life. I don't even know what life is. You know life. I don't know life. I wish I did a little bit more. What is life? What is life? Like, what is the cereal? What is it? Isn't it just like, is it a, is it like a Wheaties dupe? Who's buying this? It's like almost a Chex Mix. Oh. Right? It's like that kind of texture. Yeah, it's a Chex Mix. A oh, Chex. I could see those really hitting good, though. No, I'll tell you why they don't hit good. Why? Because with those little, those little holes in the cereals. It soaks up the milk. I know. It's too like quick. a little ravioli. Like a ravioli? Like you get to bite into like a pocket of milk. But but at that point, it's no longer biting. It's just, it's almost just squirting. Because you're biting into a ravioli and it's congealed cheese. <laughs> you know? I don't need that milk in that. You don't I'm want sorry. a little gusher? No, I want a gusher. But there's a texture to a gusher that's not a liquid milk. Why is this episode getting me? angry i know yeah it really is i'm getting fired up it's about so good 10 and 9 on the 1 to 10 scale of best cereals 58.1 million boxes of quaker life were sold in 2021 oh so if you do the math it sold for 177.5 it's it sold 177.5 million in sales on an annual basis that's more than we could say i think that's more than most people could say and if you do the math some of our listeners are eating life as the, as we speak. How do you feel? I feel horrible. <laughs> I feel horrible that I said that about life. All right. Number eight, I would say is one of my all-time faves. I like it. Kellogg's Frosted Mini Wheats. I love a Frosted Mini Wheat. 
I love a frosted mint. I mini. kind of remember that about you. Yeah. You loved a frosted mini wheat. What is it about the frosted? I'm going to let you speak on frosted Well, minis. quite similarly to life, I guess, had I not realized it, is that I like the fact that with a frosted mini wheat, well, there's a lot of things, and I could see why you would hate it. You're getting the wheat, right? You're getting the mini wheat. And the you, mini oh, wheat. You're getting the wheat. <laughs> the mini wheat has that intense crunch, but also it has a lot of gaps in the cereal to, to get some milk in there. Mm. And then you're getting the frost. You're getting the frosting. Yes. And that doesn't get soft. That stays hard. So in your ideal world, the the wheat has sucked up enough of the milk where the interior is wet and gushy, but the outside is still a little bit crispy. And then the frosting is crunchy. Mm. So it's a crunch, gush, crisp texture experience. I kind of, okay, I see what you mean with that. You and, know what I mean? And the frosting does sweeten the milk up to a perfect level, I feel. Yes. Oh, oh, absolutely. What's the difference between frosted mini wheats and Wheaties? I couldn't tell you. Well, one Are of them Wheaties frosted? Are Wheaties frosted? No. There you go. I don't believe so. And well, that's that probably why they it. were making Olympians. The mini wheats, that wheat lace. You hate it's just not my opportune cereal, and I'm going to be kind of honest. Like, I feel like you're being really close-minded for the first time in your in your career about cereal, no I'm be, less. Well, if I'm going to be close-minded about anything, it's going to be food. Yeah. I feel like no, but I, I feel, feel like you really, enjoy all foods. I do enjoy foods, and I'm not saying that I hate Frosted Mini Wheats. I've, I've had them multiple times. But oftentimes, I love, I love when it's like the small individual bowls that you got to peel off the top. You love waste. I love waste. Oh, well, I mean, that's a horrible way to put it. But I guess if you're saying that I, I love Listen, waste, you might, I might as well just agree at this I, point. I think we could all agree that if it weren't terrible for the environment, single-use plastic is the best invention that ever happened. Like, the idea that you could, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's that's fine. It's okay to say that it's, it's, it's really, go. it's amazing. But it's just, like, it's not good. It's bad. It's bad. But it's amazing. It's like cigarettes. Like, where you, what, what do you, want, you want me to pretend that it's it's bad that you could get a little cup of midi wheats? To go at any point. No, that's wonderful. It's bad because it's bad for the planet. Kind of reminds me of a, a bad breakfast buffet at a hotel. Stop. <laughs> the word. <laughs> it's. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. And it's pissing me off already to think about it. Like, you're telling me you're going to have sternos out with trays of fucking congealed scrambled eggs. Yes. And, and waffles. And French toast mm-hmm. and sausage and bacon. And then you're going to put out a dozen cups of Apple Jacks? Come on with that. It's always Apple Jacks. Because no one wants Apple Jacks. And if that's on the list, I'm going to be freaked out. You love They're, Apple Jacks? Well, I mean, I don't hate Apple Jacks. I think it's the worst. I wouldn't say it's the worst by any means. <laughs> I have a few other worsts, but I agree with you. There is nothing. First of all, back to the breakfast buffet. Yeah. Back to the. Stop serving the eggs. I'm just going to say it. I, I want to do it for it's everybody. it's crazy, but I don't mind them. It's either they're too congealed or too wet. I don't mind either. They're so wet. Congealed, I think, is actually the best way of eating an egg. I like my eggs overcooked. You know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. My scrambled eggs. Yeah. They're never wet. They're almost too dry. They're ATT. They're, rubber, they're, they're rubbery <laughs> eggs. But when there's a few croissants out and a frosted mini wheat apple jack frosted flake, situation happening yeah Tony the Tiger you might as well I mean what do you mean what do you mean when I was staying at a Holiday Inn for about a week a week Mm mm-hmm Boston yes you didn't know this I'm staying at a Holiday Inn for a week when I was in Boston I just moved there for the first time when I moved there for the first time why I didn't have an apartment yet didn't you stay with Scott's family yes but that was after the week of the hotel no, I stayed with Scott's family first, and then I went to the hotel for a week because they kind of were like, enough is enough. I can't imagine. I would be kicking you out. Imagine hosting me for th- like uh, almost two weeks. They sat at their kitchen table every night for dinner. <laughs> it was very sweet, Scott. I really appreciate it. I love that experience. We had a lot of fun. But then I went to the Holiday Inn, and the Holiday Inn, it was a little pickings with a little cereal. There is nothing I enjoy more in my life than when you and I are in a hotel and get to have a breakfast. There is like, it is like one of my simple pleasures. I, I would put it up there. Like if with, if I was dying, I'd be like, I need to have one more breakfast buffet with Andrew. <laughs> Give it, Cause 
And if we didn't, if we don't have a time limit on being there, oh, forget about it. Forget about it. I'd be there for three hours. Yeah, <laughs> it would be the rest. That'd be the day. That'd be the plan for the yeah. whole day. Buffet. <sighs> we gotta go to more buffets. I show. was thinking we have to get ourselves to a Golden Corral. But I've, I don't think I've ever been to a Golden Corral. We literally have no choice but to get on a plane and get to a Golden Corral. Where like, are they? They're all over the place. There Where? honestly might be one in Pennsylvania. No, I, you said there plane. might be one on Long Island. What now? Now the narrative is changing. You said let's get on a plane and let's go to a Golden Corral. And I feel like that's a little bit more of an experience. Well, yeah, we can go to like an authentic Golden Corral, like out out in you know Florida. Well, let's go smoke it up with your friend. <laughs> <laughs> And then this go is to the- all teeing up a special where we go to a, and golden, go corral. To a golden corral. Well, I watched a YouTuber go to like eat a golden corral for 24 hours straight, and I was like, I need to start doing this. Why are we not putting out content like that? We should I be know. going to buffets. But I'll tell you one thing about a buffet, and then I'm going to get back to cereals. Do you guys think that we should be medicated? Well, I mean, <laughs> yes. With buffets, I used to be a huge buffet supporter, a huge one, <laughs> right? And then it got to a point where I don't know if this happened as a society or it was just something Did you personal. get the ick? I turned on buffets. Yeah. I turned on buffets in a way that I would look at a buffet as I passed by in the car and be like, that place is gross. The amount of people that are in there breathing yeah. on that food. Like it was COVID? It's just sitting there. No, it was before COVID. Oh. I was a judgy, bitchy 13-year-old passing by the old country buffet well the old country buffet was gross <laughs> i think everyone knows right. and then my mom would always say remember an all-you-can-eat buffet is not a challenge i want that on a shirt no you don't i want that on a shirt <laughs> because the last the the, the buffet the lo- you'll have as much lo mein as you want and you know that you're ending with a soft serve cone <laughs> always to okay. put you over the edge. <laughs> okay. All right. This is the collab of the century. We've sustained ourselves on Factor all summer. Oh, I mean, it, the the ready to make meals that are delicious, they're easy. 55 different meals on Factor. You could choose from 55 different meals. And it is I your choice. 55 meals exa- you existed. Could, you didn't know 55 meals existed? No. Well, now you do. Yeah. And it's your choice, which I also love about them, yeah. is that you do get to select ahead of time what your meals are for the week. You know I'm a snacker. You know I'm a snacker. They got snacks. They got smoothies. They got they got everything. Anything you they want. Got they got smoothies? Have, they have smoothies, Joe. So you want to wake up in the morning for breakfast and have a smoothie? Yeah, you can. Both of our main issue in life is that we love takeout. Factor is mathematically proven Mm -hmm. to be cheaper and more financially responsible than ordering takeout. And it's no prep. It's no mess. No mess. You put that in the microwave for two minutes. You're taking it out. You have a gourmet meal. Yes. The roasted garlic chicken. The roasted Roasted garlic garlic chicken. chicken. So head to factormeals.com slash goodchildren50 and use code goodchildren50 to get 50% off. That's code goodchildren50 at factormeals.com slash goodchildren50 to get 50% off. 50% off. Imagine this podcast. 50% 50 off. off. Send it to your friends. Back to the back to the list. <laughs> um, have you ever been to Shoney's, by the way? No, Joe. Yes, we've been to Shoney's together. Is that a test? No, we, maybe we didn't go to. Sh- I thought I we went to. Sh- didn't we go to Shoney's? Me, you, and my dad in Florida, like in 2018. Was it Shoney's or was it Golden Corral? It was definitely not a Golden Corral. It must have been a Shoney's. <laughs> Shoney's is the best experience you could possibly have at a restaurant. There was a vacation where my family went to Shoney's like four days in a row. And then and I went to SeaWorld. You can choose what you want. SeaWorld, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to the, those whales. That's horrible. Well, I was, I was like 12. I'll, I'll, well, everyone's letting it slide. I, <laughs> I would, you. I would go. I'm sorry to I the whales. Go I'm sorry to Harry Styles. Yes. I'm sorry to everyone affected by SeaWorld. Um, yeah, I would obviously never attend SeaWorld as an adult. Mm-mm. Pass people by a going. lot. Yeah, when you pass San Diego and you see people going, you're like, don't you, don't you know? And don't you do, know? Don't, don't you, you know? You want to see the depressed? And well? to make matters even worse, 
in San Diego. Shut up. They're shooting off fireworks nightly. At I mean, they're doing that at Disney too. But they're shooting off fireworks nightly. But at- Disney doesn't have. Oh, wait. oh they don't have no. It's already bad for the the animals, mistreatment of animals, and then you're gonna mistreat Mother Earth like that and shoot off fireworks every night. SeaWorld, SeaWorld has to hang it up. Like, I'm sorry. When you're Absolutely. bad at your job, you get fired. Like, your job is, like, you know what I mean? Like, and if your job is, like, maintaining and keeping orca whales and you're bad at it, wrap it up. Like, retire, up. bitch. Like, we don't want you anymore. Like, free the whale. Even if, I wonder, like, if they freed those whales or rehabilitated them to the point where they can, like, be somewhere, like, one of those, like, Finding Nemo 2 reefs where they're, like, safely yes. kept in the ocean... Would people go back to SeaWorld? Probably a little bit. I would feel more apt to return to SeaWorld if they chose the ethical route. Like, they're actively losing money by torturing these whales. And you know what? This is just advice for SeaWorld, I think, now. Because I think if they were to add a few more rides that were sea-themed. They add a lot of rides. Great. Amazing, right? Sea-themed rides. Start taking out those animals. Placing them back into their natural habitat. Have a gorgeous fish tank. Gorgeous fish tank. Yeah, an, aquar- an, aquarium an aquarium is fine. An aquarium. A big ass aquarium. Amazing. And everything is sea and splashy. Like you're riding that Shamu wave to the death. Is it that worth it, SeaWorld? You have nothing else going for you but the sh- but Shamu? <laughs> like it's crazy, we bitch. Are coming out <laughs> on this episode in a dramatically <laughs> be so crazy it's just true. but i agree i it's just I when you really think more. about SeaWorld, it's like the the worst person you've ever met it's like oh you're gonna you know you're being a bitch and you're gonna keep being a bitch well, yes because that's your job change change evolve we all have to <sighs> we got there from frosted mini wheats yeah up next number seven is fruit loops and you're looking at two of them right here I kind of love Fruit Loops. I'm not getting any fruit from them. It just tastes like one one solid t- Yeah, flavor. Toucan Sam needs to put in some more work behind the scenes there. Well, Toucan Sam could... Why are you even remotely get, inviting... To get it. You're inviting the listeners to imagine Toucan Sam's beak yeah. up your ass. It would be the beak. But you invited all of us into that. that you manifested that just now. You know what I mean? Well, I guess that's a way to put. Why would you want to fuck manifestation Toucan works? Sam? Of all, like Tony the Tiger exists. You want to fuck Toucan Sam? You're attracted to Toucan Sam. I wouldn't say I'm necessarily attracted to Toucan Sam. You said Sam. he can get it. I want. I want there to be a world where Toucan Sam could get it. Because would it be horrible if he couldn't? He could get it. I'd be willing. It's a beautiful beak. <laughs> Fruit Loops, what more do you have to say? What what more do you have to say? I think that they could evolve. I think they could be better. Would I op- would they be the first thing I grab on the shelf? No. Not even the first 10 things I grab on the shelf. But I do think with Fruit Loops, they're not bad to scoop and slap when they're dry. I think almost ATC for me almost too crunchy. Really? Yeah. So you need the milk to drown it out. Yeah, I don't really love cereal as on its own. I used to, but I don't really fuck with it anymore. I like kind of like need a milk. And I really am not even having cereal probably more than twice a year. But I'm very different. I've been you know me. I go through my kicks. Yeah, you do. And I want to see if my cereal's on that list. Number six. I'm looking right at him. My lucky charms. <gasps> That's so sweet. That's so sweet. My Lucky Charms. <laughs> Why am I now saying that that is what the cereal is called? Lucky Charms for me, honestly, I always loved when I was a kid. Because, again, those marshmallows. Yeah, but you, had, you had to get through the fucking cat food of the, of the unseasoned, unflavored, like starch but why though like what what was it about them because i do love a honey nut cheerio because they're like a good glaze yeah but no honey was nutting on those lucky charms i'll say that no no charms were nutting anyway but the charms the charms and i do love that they're dehydrated marshmallows that once you pour the milk on they hydrate (laughs) 
he was from Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I love a I love a marshmallow and a lucky charm, and I think that there there is a life lesson in that. It's like sometimes you got to be willing to eat the dry ass, bland, disgusting cereal to get a few good marshmallows. Yeah, and I was willing to. I I was willing to. I was willing to get to the the bottom of that rainbow for those charms. What did you ever have the dinosaur oatmeal with the little eggs? No, little eggs. Little eggs, as my 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 family likes to call them. Eggs. Back, that's yeah. why I'm trying to bring it back. Actually, yeah. there would be the little. It would be a little packet of oatmeal. Okay. And there'd be little sugar eggs. They still sell this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little sugar eggs. I can't even imagine that. Talk about eggs. Yeah, you want eggs? Eggs. Eggs. But it almost sounds like Wisconsin. Yeah. It's uh, well, yes. Sorry, right. Little raised. sugar eggs. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd pour your hot water on it. Mix it up, those eggs would dissolve, revealing little dinosaurs. That you could eat? Yeah. Imagine you could. Those yeah, like little plastic this, dinosaurs that like people are choking one centimeter on. tall plastic. Well, yeah, I would love to try this dinosaur oatmeal, actually. Oh my god, they're amazing. I'm sure I have some in the pantry downstairs. Let's take them back. I'm sure Patty has. And we if, should if take you, them you, back. Yeah. I'll, when I go downstairs, I'm going to say, hey, Patty. I heard you got a dinosaur oatmeal. So you got and she says, shoot, I just passed it in the store and I forgot to get them. <laughs> Next time we're here, it's going to be dinosaur oatmeal yeah, galore. Everywhere. Exactly what Andrew said. Yep. I knew we were going to get them. Unopened box. But I'll tell you one last thing about Lucky Charms. I would eat a bowl of Lucky Charms to this day, but I do like how we are getting, we're advancing as a society and we're adding more charms, less of the cat food, and we're adding charms and things like ice creams at culinary ice cream shops. You go there, they'll have a Lucky Charms flavor. It'll be a cereal milk, and you're scooping the charms in that scoop. I love a cereal milk ice cream. I love a cereal milk ice cream. And it hasn't gotten old. No, never. And I think you figure you'd figure it would. Good. Let's let's. I want to just really quickly Shit. list good cereals for ice creams. Lucky Charms, Frosted Flakes, Frosted Flakes. Correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. Fruity Pebbles. Yeah. Oh, no. tricks. I wonder if tricks is going to make this list. I fuck wouldn't. That if, rabbit. If, if, fuck that rabbit. And you know what? Honestly, tricks shouldn't be. For tricks kids. are the worst. They're the worst ones. They're what, the worst. What the fuck are those? Little, little puffs. Peblets? Little peblets. I, and I wonder where they got that from. That bunny shitting those things out. Number five. <laughs> Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Yeah, that's done. I'm shocked that's five. I know it should be number. Should one. be higher. There's nothing better. There's nothing better it's than the a best cinnamon cereal. Toast crunch. I mean, it makes the milk taste amazing. Yep. And, and I'll tell you another thing. I mean, because obviously we're going to be talking Rice Krispies at this point too. But I'll every single time, and I've had a few. Every single time I've had a cinnamon toast crunch Rice Krispie treat. I'm sorry, Golden Grams on here. Never even heard of those. Never even heard of those. I hope that's a real thing. Golden grams. I'm not going to do any more research. I'm done researching. The ones that are like a little bit more graham crackery. Don't know. You don't know. You don't know. The the cereal bars. Have you seen those cereal bars? Yeah. yeah. That are always coated in the bottom with a little bit of chocolate. Yeah. They got the golden grams ones. (laughs) You've never had them? I'm sorry that you're freaking out about this. I'm sorry I can't help you. It's okay. I'll get you a bar. Okay, please. Of course. Number four. Honey, bunches of oats. That? Now that cereal, I'm still eating to this day. Yeah, I agree. Honey, bunches of oats seems like it stays with you. My mom told me that my grandmother, my nanny, used to work at the Honey Bunches of Oats factory. I could be completely You're wrong at making kidding. this up. kidding. I could be making this up, but I feel like somebody in my ancestry worked at the honey bunches of oats factory i hate to bring up marjorie by taylor swift but when you think about it like that's kind of your marjorie like Mm -hmm. all your closets of backlogged dreams and how you passed them all to me how you gave them all to me you also want to work at the honey bunches of oats factory i do or i just want to work for honey bunch welcome to the the stage stage. honey Honey bunch Bunch. i mean any honey bunch amazing and then i said to joe recently this week welcome to the stage miriam webster (laughs) Come on. That's amazing. And she walks in and she goes, 
I'm ready to read these girls down and then catch a lawsuit. No, I wouldn't. I would only sue you if you were so no, good. No, not you, Miriam oh. Webster, the company. You would spell it different. There would be two B's in Webster, and Miriam would be M I R I A M. Miriam Webster. They can't come for me then. Number three, Frosted Flakes. It's a classic. It's a staple. But I'm honestly over it. Why? I just don't feel like a Frosted Flake is, like, bringing anything to the table in the way that a lot of the other girls have in this competition so far. Well, it's because of Tony. Well, Tony's bringing a lot. He's bringing a, an eight-inch cock. Yeah, well. Seven. Max. <laughs> Max. But I think it's... I think Frosted Flakes is a cereal that has been around... They've, they've all been around the block a really long time. Frosted Flakes hasn't evolved, though, is the thing. Like, Frosted Flakes hasn't taken a risk. And I'm looking for these girls to take risks. But not everybody needs to take a risk to be successful. But if you want to make it to the top of this competition, you need to take some risks. There's no new silhouettes. There's no new talent shown. I want to see something different from these girls. And every other person on this list, every other girl on this list has done something to evolve. There's no And maybe they've made some mistakes. There, talent. there is not. Maybe some of them have made some mistakes. But they've recourse got back on track and got got here today but if you were thinking if you were mr frosted flakes himself or herself or themselves yeah thank you wouldn't you say i'm clocking in at number three and it's 2024 i've been around for i can only assume hundreds of years and (laughs) and how many hundreds of years two three four I'd like to say at least 150. Okay. And even if they weren't boxed then, people were having Frosted Flakes in the 1800s. Okay. You're going to say, I have to change something. I need to innovate. I would my like product's a very good product. Yeah. Well, and again, the thing that you're not Mr. Frosted Flake. It's a, thank God. Thank, would, I'm glad I'm you'd not. You have these Frosted Flakes flavored and shit. Yeah. Smaller. Yeah. Bigger. Yeah. Thicker. I just, I'm not unhappy with their placement on this list. I just think that they could give us more. I just think that they could give us more. When is enough enough? And speaking of giving us more, 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 whoa. I, my heart just sank at the top two. Like, I wasn't expecting this. I know you're going to be really shocked. I have a feeling that I know number one. Honey Nut Cheerios. Wrong. That's number two. Well, yes. But I want you to guess what number one is. Of the fle- of the ones that we have not yet reviewed? You're gonna be really shocked at this. I'm just gonna say it because it's gonna Pops? Take, you'll never you'll never get it. You'll what? never get it. Um so number two on this list is Honey Nut Cheerios. Which through and through has been a staple. I love what they do for hearts. I was gonna say heart healthy. Just like Demi Lovato. And they're they're a healing this the world's population one box at a time i agree at least they're making it seem that way they're really their pr is amazing so if their pr is like if you don't get a defibrillator get a fucking box of cheerios we'll help you with your cholesterol yeah do you think that they're lying we should be eating it we should my cholesterol's through the roof no so number one here and i just know you're gonna be fucking pissed cheerios Oh my we God. just spent 56 minutes talking about the top 10 cereals oh. on this list. <laughs> and the top two are the same cereal. And you're going to tell me <laughs> that the Honey Nut is below. is below the regular flavorless round Cheerio? I just don't get why Honey Nut is different than Cheerio. Like, why... Like, we gotta group them together. They can't be seen Do as you, different. I'm sorry. I'm pissed. Call me old fashioned. They can't be seen as different. <laughs> I agree. Why is there now a binary for what makes a Cheerio? <laughs> like, why shouldn't they all just be Cheerios? This just Ruined. derailed my entire month. I know. I wouldn't even put it on the day or the week because <laughs> month. I, who is eating Cheerio? Please, please let us know if you're just eating Cheerios and maybe this? I'm being joy. Joy. Joy, that's not the word I would put on it. Okay, 
a few a few of my personal faves that did not make the list this year. Pops, some of my favorite. Yeah. It's just simple. It's corn. It's sweet. It just does the job. Yeah. Golden. I think we're missing, obviously, the golden Cookie trio. Crisps. Cookie crisps. That's not going to make the list. I don't fuck with a cookie crisp. They, I I remember at that age, like, when they dropped, or at least when they, like, rebranded cookie crisps, I was like, this is a cookie. You know, like, and even me, even me at that age, I saw cookie crisps, and I said, you're, I shouldn't have you're putting a bowl of Chips Ahoy in a, in a glass of milk and saying breakfast. Like, I knew that that was a little bit crazy. I will say, Reese's Puffs... Oh, yeah. They don't get the credit they deserve. No, they don't. They don't. But their song? Reese's Puffs, Reese's Puffs, peanut butter chocolatey flavor. That was, that was a hit. My big three is obviously Frankenberry, Booberry, and Count Chocula. I'm a spooky girl. I love the Halloween season. And those three cereals, to me, were always the best. I think maybe it was because they weren't around year-round, so I had to enjoy them while they were here. But those three, to me, you can't beat. I don't think I've had one of those once. Shut the fuck up. I'm like, being honest. Like I don't know what you want me to do. You've like, never had Count Chocula? No. I didn't fuck with him. He, was, he wasn't my vibe, but you know who I did fuck with and who I want justice for? And I think it's actually really oh, insane God. that I didn't make the top Don't 10. Don't talk about Captain Crunch. Captain Crunch. Captain Crunch? Is it going to make the top 10 list of because best Captain cereals? Captain Crunch actually sucks. Like, it actually is, like, a disgusting cereal. It's too crunchy. Aren't you putting... I'm so confused. I'm confused now. Because you know what? You are you are leading our listeners on to a place that they don't need to go. You're telling me that it's too crunchy, but you want to soak everything in milk? Wouldn't wouldn't it just sog it out a little bit? Maybe but it just leave it in the milk a little bit longer. But then it's like, but it's one of those things where it's either the crunchiest thing you've ever experienced, or in a split second, it's just like, it's wet pellets. That's one of my favorite cereals. Good children, children to, to the, the guidance, guidance office. Reese's puffs, Reese's puffs, peanut butter chocolatey flavor. Has anybody ever done something to you or maybe even someone else that's just like they did them dirty, like bad? And it's like past the point of something that like you would say is in your moral range or whatever. And it's like you love them and you've like had your whole like, oh, I forgive you. Like that was whack, but like we're over it, whatever. But it's just like still to this day, you're not over it thing. I'm like, when has it been too long where I'm just like, this is something I'm never going to get over. And it's like our friendship or relationship will never be the fucking thing. Like, I don't know how to navigate that. So, oh, give me insight. Thank you. It's really hard, I think, when you care about someone and want to see that person succeed and wish the best for them and have years of established friendship and understand them like see through past like you know who they are you know why they are the way that they are you can justify it you can explain it you can say well this isn't really them like i know who they are but then like it's really hard once it pushes you past a boundary to move forward i think in a way that like you can return to the way you were Mm -hmm. and i feel like that happens as you age i think that the more that you become who you are the more you're comfortable in like again your boundaries the more that you feel that kind of rift with people but especially if they've done something i think forgiving someone is always important i think looking at someone with compassion is the biggest priority like it it doesn't suit doesn't do you any favors to be mad at them but at the same time it doesn't do you any it doesn't do you any favors also to just let that shit slide and move on. Like if it's keeping you up enough to like call into a podcast and talk about it, mm-hmm. like it's not worth your peace. And that might be really painful mm-hmm. and might be a really weird situation where you also feel like maybe you're being the bad guy somehow. But I think that at the end of the day, you need to look around your life and say, who here? 
has my best interests in mind, who here brings me peace, who here... And of course, you'll face conflict with your friends, Mm -hmm. but you know in your gut what feels right and what feels like maybe this is this is taking me past the level of comfort I want to have here, like pushing me away from a friendship and more into something else. And I think letting that linger in a friendship is not a good thing. Yeah. No, I completely agree with you. I don't think I have anything to add. I think that like the only thing I would say is to your point, like you can forgive them, but if you're not forgetting what they did, that's a completely different story, right? It's like they might've done something to you. Is there respect there? Do you still have mutual respect? If you don't, then I think it's your time for, for you to move on. I also think it's unfair to forgive and not forget and then yeah. be friends. I agree. Like if there is that thing underneath it the whole time, it's like, if well, it's that big, they deserve to be they like in full kindness mode. They deserve to be with friends with people who don't have that lingering over yeah. their friendship. They and deserve I also mean healthy friendships. I mean, like I'm definitely a more passive person, but like if you're not as passive and you have the ability to be like, listen, I, I've tried to forget what's happening or like forgive you for the things that have happened in the past. But I just every single time we're together or it, it just doesn't leave my mind. I I can't I can't be around that anymore. Yeah. So I wish you the best, but I'm no longer a part of your life. That's a tough conversation to have with somebody, but sometimes it's important for you to be able to let go. Yeah. Let go and let God. And everyone, I truly everyone benefits. Like, it's not like you're like, I've always felt that way even about like breakups. It's like. If someone doesn't want to be in your life, if you, like if you're the other person and someone doesn't want to be in your life, that's a good thing. That's a sign. These aren't my fucking people. This isn't my fucking person. Like yeah. I, I will find that person. Um, so it's never really a bad thing to say this. This has run its course. Crazy. Are you hungry, Joe? I'm starving, and I know exactly where we're going today. <laughs> Should we do the good, good children, children to, to the, the cafeteria? cafeteria. Hey everyone, happy Super Bowl Sunday. We are going to Milky Way. I think Milky called, Ways. Milky Ways Creations. Would you say sure. ice cream and creations? It's gonna be a, I think we're going to create something. And cereal bar almost? I looked up cereal bar, cereal ice creams near me. And this was the closest one I that almost came think, up. I almost think that place with the speakeasy in the back has cereal ice cream. No way. You're talking Charlotte's? Yeah, I think Charlotte's has cereal Charlotte's ice cream. Charlotte's doesn't have cereal ice cream. They barely have frozen yogurt. This one looks amazing. It, I mean, Andrew sent me the picture on the train here. It does look quite good. And Cemetery. Oh. Pick up, your feet, pick up your feet and hold your breath. I'm going to figure it out when I get there. I'm going to listen to what Andrew orders and then repeat that to the person. No, because there. we have to have two different types. Then I need you to help me pick it out. And you need to choose your favorite cereal. cereal. Fruity Pebbles. Great. So then you build from there. You get to choose two toppings in the drizzle. What are the topping options? Well, you're talking, you got some sprinkles, there's a cookie dough. There's... life in Huntington. Look at that. It's gorgeous. A wonderful life in Huntington. The topping options? Your topping options, there was a few. There's a few. Acting classes, I've been telling you, you have to take acting Joe, classes. Joe, I don't need them. We're very close. Um, I used to go out here sometimes. You haven't been out here ever. No, I used to go out here. I went out here a few times. I can't think of where, but I've definitely gotten blackout drunk in Huntington as a 20 something. I can't tell you where this place is. Can you just tell me what the topic options are? Is the Super Bowl out. happening in Huntington? I'm freaking out. <laughs> the heck? Your your options are gonna be like some sprinkles, some some Oreos. You're gonna have. We're gonna have cookie doughs. Well, I'm gonna think if you had a fruity pebble. Let's do the deductive reasoning. If you had a fruity pebble, what goes well with fruit? What goes well with fruit? Sometimes chocolates go well with fruit, Joe. I don't think so. Sometimes, like, cheesecake pipes go well with fruit. They have that as an option. There is some, like, there's probably some sort of, like, white chocolate option. I think white chocolate. There's probably some sprinkles. You love sprinkles. I'm going to see if they have a pre-made. I like when I tr- I trust them. Like, if there's, like, an item on the menu that's, like, already made, I'd rather just say, can I get that Sunday versus coming off of my own thing. Mm, you know what I they mean? They have cookie crisp. I, I feel like cookie crisp cereal and an ice cream is probably pretty But good. I don't fuck with cookie crisp. I, get- I think I'm getting Captain Crunch. It's literally right here. Don't get in it. How about you get in it then, Joe? Because I don't have to fight you at the cereal bar in Huntington. I'm barely even know who I am. And then it turns out you're lying to me. 
You want to know what I got? I got Captain Crunch blended into the vanilla ice cream, and then I topped it with some nutter butter, some cookie dough, and a marshmallow drizzle. It sounded pretty good to me. What did I got? You did. You just got a pre-made one. I got Couldn't the cactus jack. I got the cactus jack. I think it was Reese's Puffs, Cocoa Puffs, chocolate, peanut butter, Reese's on top. I like peanut butter. I like Reese's. What can I say? It's unbelievable. It's kind of like, for a second there, I was worried, like my first taste of it. Oh, let me try the actual just ice cream. The ice cream is pretty fantastic. Get some cookie dough. You gotta think about it this way. Oh, there's marshmallows all over my hands. You gotta think about it this way. This is a protein shake. It's a, it's a cup of ice cream. Mm -mm. Back to the studio. <sighs> There's nothing like cereal blended into ice cream to make you feel... To set your Super Bowl Sunday off on the right foot. Mm -hmm. And with that, another incredible episode in the books. We laughed. We learned. We and called the fuck out of SeaWorld. And we called the fuck out of, uh, out of a few... I can't speak. Okay. We called the f we called the fuck out of some cereal brands that if you were to send us an email and say please, we would love to work with you. I'd be willing to retract my statement and start eating your cereal. Don't forget to do your homework. Like, comment, subscribe, rate, review. You know what we said at the beginning? Sixteen thousand reviews by March. We'll see you next week for a brand new episode, and we'll see you on Patreon this Friday for a brand new Patreon. And we'll see you until then on the internet across all platforms at Good Children Pod. I'm on Instagram at Joe Hedges and on TikTok at Be Quiet Joe. I'm on Instagram at Andrew Muscarella on TikTok at Andrew underscore Musky. And that's that on that. And grab a bowl, grab your favorite cereal, pour some milk. I've always been the kind of girl that hid my face. So I was afraid to tell the world what I've got to say. But I've had this dream right inside of me. I'm going to let it show. It's time to let you know. To let you know. This is real. This is me. I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be now Gonna let the light shine on me Now I found who I am There's no way to hold it in No more hiding who I wanna be This is me That was some of the best singing we've ever done. Because we weren't trying to belt. <laughs> <laughs>